Yes, new scenery today because I'm still running the incredibly loud 3D printers in there, but that's not what you came here for. Today you came for a game all about flipping, riding, and shooting zombies because today we're talking about Zombicide Gear Up from CMON. Now this is a flip and ride game based in the Zombicide universe in which you're quickly trying to kill zombies and then beat a boss. And no, you can't shoot your friends in that space. Still, still sour about that rule in the original Zombicide. Anyway, this is a flip and write game. Let me know in the comments below what is your favorite blank and write game. Could be anything. At this point, we've got so many to choose from and so many good ones. Personal fan of Trails of Tucana myself, so let me know in the comments below what is your favorite blank and write game. Because today, Zombicide Gear Up, all about shooting zombies, using your weapons efficiently, working with your friends, and it plays up to six people, which is pretty great. So let's take a look right now at Zombicide Gear Up, what it does, how it plays. We'll come back up talk final thoughts. All right, so this is Zombicide Gear Up set up for two players, essentially. I have the other person would be over there, but what you have are these round cards laid out here. There's 10 of them, you leave one out, and then in round one, you're gonna use the spawn cards. Round two, you're gonna use the boss cards. You're gonna choose one of the bosses to fight. We're gonna play with Super Abomination right now. The red side's more difficult, the black side's a little easier. This setup card tells you, based on the difficulty, what to set up. So each player will get two zombies to start with. You'll use the black side of the difficulty card, or the spawn card, and then the black side of the boss as well. Now the boss is not in play just yet. It will come into play in round two. Everyone's gonna choose their player and make sure to pick the side that doesn't say one players. Excuse me. You're gonna pick the side that says not one players. Lots of different options here. Essentially your weapons are up here in the top. Now everybody has a different set of weapons. Some of them are unique to the character obviously, but this also shows you how they interact. They also all have powers. Some of them have starting powers listed here and some of them have powers listed on the bottom that you're going to upgrade. Now, your yellow one is kind of your specialty weapon, usually in the character art there. It's already going to have the upgrades for you. Plus, here's what I love. There's a cheat sheet to show you what every one of these symbols on your character card means. That's really great to me. Down here, you've got your shields and bullets and health. Bullets, when unlocked, are basically used to cross off single spaces on zombies or bosses. The shields will protect you against damage. Your heart are your health. These spaces are the streets of... Street 3, Street 2, Street 1. When zombies first spawn, which we will get two to start with, they start in spawn streets or in Street 3. Now these zombies have symbols on them. You'll notice that they also have spaces to be marked out. Your weapons will mark those spaces. Now you can rotate them, flip them, do whatever you want. You just have to make sure that they stay within the zombie and within open spaces. By that I mean if this one, which goes over one, two, so let's just say we have this going for us here. One, two, and one already filled out. We could not then put it here because it would be off the map if we tried to do do, 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 or we could not do it here, one, two, this way, because of the way it is. So it'd have to be where it can fit. So we couldn't do it here either because this one's already filled. We could not go one, two here because it's already filled there. However, if you ever turn over a card and it shows you a symbol that you can't use, you can just sacrifice it and use a one single space which can be helpful because if you fill in one of the spaces with a bullet you gain a bullet if you fill in a space with a red space there it mitigates the damage that the zombie does and when a zombie attacks it attacks you for the amount of damage shown so currently it does three but you could get it down to one damage then the zombie will move now let's take a look at how that works so the round cards look like this it's going to show you a color of attack weapon you can use so red for us will be our bat which looks simple, but except you can do three single spaces wherever you want to on the zombie, which is pretty great. And then zombies with that symbol will walk. When a zombie walks, it's gonna move one street closer towards you at the bottom. If a zombie is on street one and walks, it then attacks. Basically, it will do the damage it does shown on the card. And you're gonna do that. Now, on the third turn, you're gonna get a spawn as well. So spawn, you'll check your correspondence over here. So A tells us we all draw a zombie and add it to our street three. You can divide it up amongst you who gets which zombie, but then you'll put them out there on street three. Then, uh, and it'll tell you which type. So the black zombies are more generic. The red zombies are a lot more difficult. Now I do love the art on here. It's just really, really great stuff. Different art for different soldiers, different art for different zombies. And then also the different boss zombies have some really great art as well. Zombie Pyramid, the Dead Sox, just tremendous stuff. Zombifant, uh, Screamer, the Mutation, all these are great. 
And some of them will have special rules written on them here as well. Now, once you've played through the entire round, you're gonna have a lot of zombies here. Once you defeat a zombie, you can then upgrade one of your weapons, starting with one, then two. Now you can choose which weapon to upgrade, but you'll go with the first upgrade, then the second upgrade. Then, in, after the entire round is played, you'll change out these spawn cards for the boss cards. Now these boss cards will attack in different ways. So yellow, this one says, you do damage for the boss for every yellow star uncovered. That's nine currently, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a lot of damage. So you gotta start mitigating that soon. The other things it'll show you are different stars like blue and yellow, which is gonna hit you pretty hard. That's the special ability, which means it does two unblockable damage. So you're gonna have to be fighting this out. There you go, spawn a bees instead of zombies. You're gonna fight this out. When you defeat the zombie boss, you win. That is how you play Zombicide Gear Up. Very simple, very straightforward flip and right with a great theme attached to it. So that's Zombicide Gear Up. It is a simple system. After all, you're just following the steps of the rule book. Um, set up to breathe, playing the characters to breathe. The characters are interesting characters. They're all pretty cool. Like they have great weapons. The art's interesting, you know what I mean? But it's not my favorite art for a game. I get it the zombie side style. I like the art for the zombies more so than the character art. But the characters play very different. All their weapons are different, all that sort of stuff, even as much as you can in a flip and right game. What I like, though, is this elevates the idea of blank and right. Like, you're doing it more in a theme, and you're really starting to figure out how to get theme worked into these games a little better. I mean, it was kind of the conundrum of the early Euros, where it was like, yeah, we're kind of farming, right? But now you see Euros come out, and you're like, whoa, this is really thematic, like my father's work or something like that. So we're talking about how it looks great, obviously. It's simple. It doesn't take a lot of table room. The only thing that takes any room is the actual round cards, like the... Actual cards you flip over each turn. Mechanically, I think the game's sound. I love the fact that this is like a wave shooter zombie game based on flipping rights because they just keep coming and they just keep coming. And then the boss shows up and you've got to start mitigating that damage or you're going to die quickly. Upgrading your weapons is great because then you can choose, okay, wait a minute. I can kill this zombie in maybe two turns if I do it this way. But if I do it this way, I can get more bullets and more shields this turn. Having those bullets and shields is invaluable, right? So all in all, very fun game, a lot of replayability, tons of replayability. It's just a fun, fun flip and right game. So I'm a huge fan of this. I think it's a great game, a great game. That's gonna be, it's gonna stand the tell, ta ta test of time? Taste test, it's gonna stand the taste test of time uh, as time goes, because it is different. Like it's something different in the flip and right genre, the roll and right genre, whatever you wanna call it, the blank and right genre as I've started to call it. You're shooting zombies, you're doing weapon stuff instead of just like, uh, you're picking carrots and all that. So I like Zombie Side Gear Up. I think you will too. It plays fast. It's difficult though. Even on easy mode, it is very difficult. So if you're a fan of flipping rights, if you're a fan of rolling rights, if you're a fan of Zombie Side and you want a quick game in the universe, this is 100% win for you. So make sure to check this out. Speaking of checking stuff out, October 20th, one week from the time of me shooting this, the merch store opens at Dicetowerstore.com. We are so excited to bring this to you. Make sure to check it out Thursday, October 20th, Dicetowerstore.com. Go check out all the shirts. The site is live now, so you can go look at it. If you want to check out some pre-order stuff, you can go do that. Amazing looking stuff. We are so excited about the merch store. It's just a taste of what's to come. So thanks for watching. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, et cetera, at Dicetowerbrian. Until next time, we'll see you.